Well, they say the third time's the charm, and so I hope this is the third time I've actually gotten back to making posts, so I hope this is the charm, and I'm glad to be back. As most of you know, I purchased a long arm at, on my last post and showed you that. I've been working really hard on that because it is very, very different from using a sit down with your hands. And I'm, though I never leave that, and I have a quilt or a table runner right now to do uh, quilting on my sewing machine, uh, I really enjoyed the long arm too. And so I will show you where I finally got into the long arm and I'm, I'm actually quilting for people now and doing special quilting. So I'll show you that, but today we know we're getting close to summer. Some of you closer than us who had snow yesterday. But part of summer, besides flowers, we get a lot of rodeo and outdoors things. So we're gonna show um, uh, a whole grouping of Western style designs that we can doodle and then quilt on our quilt. So join me for that. So here's the last muslin sampler I did. And I am extremely pleased with it. And as you can see, I haven't known what to do with it. So I'm playing around with um, ink tents pencils and thinking maybe I'll paint some of it. Doesn't matter, I'm just playing. I've also learned that there is really no place in my studio where I don't, don't get shadows. So you'll have to forgive me for that. But I'll get a little bit of close-ups and I'm gonna go fast on this because I don't wanna get bogged down. If you have a Bernina Q20 or Q24 on a frame, I would 100% encourage you, if you use Facebook, to join V as in Victor, G as in girl, quilting, VG quilting. She has so many helps on using your long arm. A lot of it is with a computer, which I do not have but a lot of it is live for just loading and taking off and learning the innuendos of getting a good square quilt. So um, I actually taught, did some doodling, taught some doodling on that site for those who wanted to learn it and um, then took every design just about that I showed, not all, but many, and put them on a big piece of muslin. And this is what I had cut off to save. So um, I'm ready to go on that and having a lot of fun. And we're going to do some of these designs. But let's go back and look at those Western designs now. Most of these designs are pretty common. So you might have doodled them or played what, around with them again or in the past. There's about half a dozen that you can put all together. Or you can come up with your own way of doing it and putting it in a quilt. And I'll show you um, an option. So first of all, we're going to deal with a cowboy hat. And to do a cowboy hat, I'm simply going to come up, curve in and back down. If you've done that flower that I've shown that looks like a tooth, that's what you're doing. So I'm going to get that pen up better and copy that again. Okay, right here. And then I'm going to curve around or go back. I, I've got a tiny bit of a curve to it, but you don't have to. Then I'm going to loop here, back to the other side, and then back into the middle. You can vary that however you desire, but in general, there's your cowboy hat. So let's do it again. Up, curve in, back down, back to the left. There's your big loop, go to the other side and back in. In general, that's your cowboy hat. Now let's throw in a boot. We've got to have a boot, don't we? And I'll show you how to connect these with your quilting in a moment. So 
I'm going to come in, and in this case, I will have done a little loop or something. Come in here. I'm going to come up. I'm doing a curve on the top of the cowboy boot. Then I'll come down, curve into the boot. You can curve it or you can point it, whatever you want. As I come close to the edge, I pull up. The reason is, then I want to bring down the heel so it's somewhat e even with the um, boot bottom. Come over, and I come over a little bit further from that so that it looks like the person's heel is sticking out, however it works. This is the general concept of what you want. You could put something inside the boot if you'd like to make it look like a Tony Llamas or whatever that name is. Let's do that again. So we would be about here. We'll go up, curve over, down, and around. They're gonna be different every time. Up we go. Then, this one I can put a star in it. Let's also add in, we've gotta have horseshoes, don't we? So horseshoe is pretty easy. It's when we get to a stopping point, it's just a curve, oval, part of an oval. Then whatever side you're at, it doesn't matter. We're going to angle down, up, and in a little bit. And then we're going to echo that curve. We're going to come before we get down to the bottom and stop. Then we'll come over, down, and in. It's a little different each time, and it's not perfect, and it doesn't have to be. So let's try that one again. We'll come this way, and it does take me a minute to think sometimes. Angle, up, in. Echo, stop before you get to the bottom. Angle, down, and in. And there's your horseshoe. The other thing I did was just did something fun as a star emblem. You've got to have stars. And you could just do a star. If you remember how to do a star, you do two sides of a triangle. Doesn't matter which way you go. Then you cross over to the middle cross the middle, and you go back home, and that gets you a whimsical star. But if you're doing into a loop, say, we can come here and do a circle, make it into a circle. Then we can do our two sides of the triangle, cross over the middle, cross over the middle, and go back home. And we have it into more of an emblem then. So now, let's look at that together. How do we connect these? Well, you can do a loop if you'd like. Another option is for, um, for a lasso, I just came in, did kind of a loop, and did another one, and then went over to do something. Now, this is kind of big. I'll get smaller so I can do more. I can stop and do a boot right now. There we go. Then I can come out and do another lasso or just curve over to something and you can do it however you like. Now I can do a hat. And this one, actually, I'm going to curve around a little bit more to give room for that um, left side of the hat. And I'll try not to make it too big. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Why did I do that? But hey, that doesn't look bad, does it? Okay, if I was to come here, let's just pretend I'm coming here. Can tell it's been a while, can't you? 
That's not a bad hat, though. You can play with that. Okay. And I'll make another one. I'm off to the side. You know that. And then I can come to where... Work my way back. Let's try a boot going the other direction. So we're going to go up. Curve. Come down. And this is a little bit harder. There's my... Heel, and we got it. Looks more like a work boot, but that's okay. When you're doodling, you can do what you want. We can also take and do a, um, a grouping. We can also just curve, too, and do a grouping of the horseshoes. So for the horseshoe, when I'm doing it at this point, I'm going to take where I came in here, and I'm going to do the horseshoe here, so now I have a place where I can come in at and not be stuck with that curve. So here's what it will look like as a whole. If you can see that, you can see how I went. Whether you go all the way across your quilt or whether you sit down free motion quilting and doing a quadrant, but just varying up your designs and here you could see how I took and did more than one horseshoe to fill it all in. You can do this in blocks, however you desire to put it on your quilt. But I hope you have fun with it, and I'm glad to be back, and we'll see you next time. Oh, by the way, be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and make some comments. Let me know um, if, if you like this. Be kind in your comments. Thanks a lot.